This tank here, well, it looks like it's probably no good. We actually sent it back to the manufacturer and had it repaired uh, for about half the cost of a new tank. Uh, this, this is some equipment that's uh, used for maintaining the vacuum of uh, the liquid natural gas tank. This is basically, there's a, uh, a real elaborate high power vacuum pump to maintain the deep vacuum in the interstitial space. And there's also a purge cart that uh, it purges uh, natural gas vapor and also heats the tank because if you warm the tank up, you create more molecular activity so it's easier to suck out or vacuum out the molecules and get a really deep vacuum. This is an example of uh, a cryogenic uh, liquid natural gas pump. This, this pump, this huge pump, happens to be on the fuel truck to dispense the fuel. And it's really no different than the pump you would find in a liquid natural gas station. Uh, I thought it would be interesting. Uh, just, hey, I've never seen one myself until we bought it. Uh, every, about every five years you need to rebuild these pumps. And, and of course these mobile trucks, they also need to be uh, recertified every five years. The, the pressure relief valves need to be replaced and recertified every five years. There's also annual annual visual inspections that are required as well. But uh, they're, they're basically a centrifugal pump. They use a ceramic bearings and then they have a three-phase uh, electric motor to turn it. LNG uh, state costs, again I mentioned the station costs, um, equipment costs are anywhere from about 750000 to, to $1 million. Site improvements. $250,000 to $800,000. That truck we saw today, there in the presentation today, if you were to buy it, it would be about $400,000. Um, shop facility improvements. Uh, if, if, you, if you have a shop facility that's designed for alternate fuels, uh, in other words, methane detection, air circulation, uh, you're going to spend somewhere between thirty and $300,000 to, to uh, retrofit or upgrade your shop or more, depending on the size of the facility. Um, and, and liquid natural gas fuel cost per gallon uh, today, that's the county's cost, is uh, $1.40 a gallon. Mm -hmm. That includes a $0.15 cent per gallon surcharge for the maintenance and repair of the station. And the county's uh, cost for diesel fuel today Again, with that same 15 cent surcharge, it is about a dollar ninety gallon. So, liquid natural gas fuel costs are a little bit lower, but it also has less uh, uh, thermal energy than does uh, diesel fuel, so you have to use more. How much more? Typically, you find about twice as much, uh, because I don't think the spark ignited engines are quite as uh, thermally efficient as are the uh, compression ignition or diesel. Uh, although it, it'll, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how that changes in, in the future. It seems like with, with the reduction of uh, diesel emissions, there's been also a loss of uh, fuel efficiency. Uh, this this is an example of, of uh, an alternate maintenance facility that the county has. It's uh, two years old now, and I've had some folks tell me they they'd love to. Have Love to take it from me if they could, but I don't want to give it up. We we, we love this facility to work in. Um, it's alternate fuel vehicles. It provides good air circulation, has methane detection. We can vent the fuel in the shop because of the air circulation. We we've never had an alarm, a methane alarm in the building in the two years that we've worked in there, or propane, or <coughs> propane uh, vehicles. So it's a facility, you can do it all. Gas electric hybrid, natural gas propane. And for folks uh, for folks who don't have those facilities, unfortunately, or a lot of cases, this is where you work on your alternate fuel vehicles. Outside on portable lists. Now, these are some ideas I had. 
complete manager ideas. I, I love listening to the ideas Kathy had uh, for, the, for the stage fleet. I can tell you right now, the County of Sacramento Management, they're going through all those same gyrations that Kathy talked about. <laughs> and, you know, the county's looking at, if you, if you don't drive your county vehicle at least 7,500 miles annually, then, then you're not going to be justified to have it. So that's not quite as strict as 6,000 every six months, but I have to agree. You know what people are going to do that maybe drive a county vehicle 5,000 miles a year? Well, they're going to drive them another 2,500 miles a year just to keep them. So, so I don't know where our fleet policies are going in the, in, in the future, but I've never seen challenges like we find today with the economy, uh, with the emphasis on, on uh, alternate fuel, and, and uh, emphasis I think is really important, uh, fuel efficiency, <laughs> and finding the money uh, to do all that. And just kind of fleet managers got a raise. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, number one, reduce fleet size. Uh, you reduce your fleet size, your fleet, you're going to reduce your, in my opinion, your carbon footprint. And, and you're going to reduce your fleet cost if you reduce your fleet size. You know, that might mean that employees have to drive their own vehicles. Hey, it might mean maybe a lot of unnecessary trips get cut out because you can maybe taking, maybe still maintaining the pool, whether it's a rented pool fleet from a rental car company or it's your own uh, business uh, pool fleet and you, and you take away those, those personal assignments. People can still go where they need to go, but you just cut out a lot of those unnecessary trips like, you know, to the coffee shop or wherever they, they go to get lunch. And really important to me as a fleet manager is to use lower carbon fuels. To me, natural gas is, I think, other than hydrogen, because hydrogen has no carbon. Natural gas is probably the lowest carbon fuel there is. Now, I don't have a picture of the molecule, but it's really, really not a, a unique molecule in that it has four hydrogen. And that's really all we're after anyway, is the hydrogen. The carbon is just a carrier of the hydrogen. So when we burn that fuel, well, what do we get if we have complete combustion? CO2, where the carbon is now attached to oxygen, that's a carrier for the oxygen. So we're really only after the hydrogen. Well, when you look at gasoline and you look at diesel, but you have a very long chain hydrocarbon molecule where those carbons are only carrying two hydrogens per carbon molecule. So when you burn that fuel in the engine, you get complete combustion. Yeah, you still get CO2, you just get more of it. So, so, so methane, or natural gas, is a low carbon fuel to begin with. Hey, and it's going to be a great source possibly in the future for hydrogen, because they can steam up the hydrogen in reformers. And, and basically, basically hard harvest the hydrogen. Um, to me, it's a transition, it's a transition free fuel. Uh, we we can make good use of it today. <coughs> Gasoline and diesel will be around a long time. And I'm not looking forward for gasoline to go away anytime soon. I happen to have a, a 1990 uh, supercharged Mustang hot rod. And I look forward to driving that in my retirement. Um, and then again, buy more fuel-efficient vehicles. Can't emphasize that enough. Uh, <clears throat> also, a thought, maybe one of those little tiny thoughts, train employees to drive with fuel economy in mind. I. I've noticed that a lot of the new cars are coming with uh, a, mile, a mile per gallon or some sort of a trip meter that displays mile per gallon. I think that's a real good thing. 